God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Most gracious God, how we thank you. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love and your kindness that you've shown and implemented towards all of us. God, you once again have shown your, yourself to be gracious, shown yourself to be kind. Matter of fact, you've shown yourself to be wonderful. And just knowing the very little thing, God, and that was waking us all up. And starting us on our way. And for that, God, in some people's eyes, that is very small. But when you have the responsibility to wake thousands and millions of all across this world, that's such a huge responsibility. And God, we're just grateful this morning that you had us on your mind to call us all by name and wake us up one more time. God, on this day, now we're in the sanctuary, this holy place that you've set aside for us, God, to come together as brothers and sisters in the faith. You set aside a day of Sunday beautiful sanctuary to where we can worship you in spirit and in truth. And God, now we are inviting you into this place to take full control. God, we want to remove our hands and we want to put your hands right in our very midst. We're asking you now, God, to cover us in this sanctuary cover us in this holy place, God. God, I'm asking now is that you would allow your Holy Spirit to rest in this place. And God, I'm asking now, God, even now, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to saturate our atmosphere. Get down in the deep treasures of all of our hearts. Move from man to man and woman to woman and woman to man. I'm asking you to just just set the Holy Spirit in this place. God, get into the musicians on this morning, God. Allow the Holy Spirit to manifest through their hands. God, allow the Holy Spirit to manifest through their, their eyes, God, their ears, God. The same goes for our choir. Praise Him, God. Allow them, God, to just allow the Holy Spirit to saturate them in this holy place. That God move from this stage out to the youth, God, and touch every man, God, every living specimen, God, that you have created with your very own hands, God, with, that you created with your very own mouth, God, with your very own breath, God, how you breathed into man, and you created woman and man, and God, for that we are grateful. Now, God, since we have the activities of all of our limbs, God, it is our responsibility to give you praise and glory this morning. It is our responsibility to shout worthy this morning. It's our responsibility to shout hallelujah this morning. It's our responsibility to say thanks to Jesus this morning. It's our responsibility to say, Lord, you've been so good. It's our responsibility to say, Lord, you've been kind. God, just allow us to worship you. Allow us to worship you, God. Allow us to worship you, God. Even on foreign soil, God, somebody needs to hear a word. 
what you do. However you want to do it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all pray. And all of God's children say amen. And thank God. Come on, go ahead and fist bump somebody this morning. And tell them it's time to see you. And let's have some worship in this place.
bless your preach word on this day. God of grace. Allow me to say something that will encourage some sinner man, some sinner woman, some sinner boy or girl on this hour of sermon delivery. God, I ask now that you would simply cover my heart, cover my mind, and cover my eyes, God, and my ears, so that I may stay focused on what my petition is for you, for me to do on this day. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. 
man. A runaway who runs away into God. Good to see you, Sister Virginia. Good to see you, Shamika. Amen. Good to see all of you people who run away from everything. <laughs> Leaving will always be more comfortable than staying. Turn this mic up because they need to hear. Running will always be easier than remaining. Packing up your life and throwing it into a state of perpetual chaos is your way of staying rather than your way of embracing discomfort. Because as long as you are always the one leading, you're always the one in control. Y'all missed it already. You're the one calling all the shots. You're the one choosing that chaos. If your heart is breaking every single step of the way, then you're the one cracking it on. And you're, 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 you're comfortable right there in that very place. You know how to handle those inflicted wounds that you have. And what's scary about it? What's scary is actually staying. What's scary is actually investing. And what's scary is opening your life up to a situation or a person or a circumstance that's not entirely within your control. With no guarantee that it's going to work out even in your favor, tell somebody, you can't run forever. I'll say it again because y'all ain't saying that to nobody. Tell your neighbor, say you, run, you can't run forever. And let's just be honest up in here in Main Street this morning. We know a lot of people who love running away. Running away from their marriages, running away from their homes, running away from their children, running away from their jobs, running away even from the church. How, just how that is it that we love to run away? Tell somebody it seems so easy for all of us to do. Sarah, Sarah is tired. Away for a child. My Lord. She convinces Abram to go with plan B. Somebody say plan B. She gives, she gives her Egyptian slave girl to Abram as a wife with the understanding that anything or any children will belong to Sarah. Once Hagar is pregnant, however, conflict simply sets in. Sarah deals, deals with Hagar. She flies or she flees along in this, this wilderness of a place. And the Lord, the Lord, the Lord finds her right there in the wilderness and commands her to return and then submit to Sarah. Wow. However, however, King, the Lord also reveals what? that Hagar's son what? would have an incountable number of offsprings and they will live in conflict with everyone. Hagar, Hagar practices. Praises, she practices and praises God as the one who sees and returns to Abraham 
and Sarah, and Ishmael is so born. Now, that's the word of God. Now let's find out what the Lord wants to say to us on this morning. Here's a dramatic thrust of today's message. If you don't take nothing else, I want you to write this down. Matter of fact, I want you to send it out there on social media. God sees your affliction because he sees you can see his mercy and submit to him. Y'all didn't get it. God sees your affliction. And because God sees your affliction, he sees you. And he can see his, you can see his mercy and submit to him. I just can't. 
could flee from the presence of Sarah, but she couldn't flee from the presence of the Lord. Can I help y'all again? Sarah. She. She could not run fast enough. Sarah, hey God. She could run away from this individual. She could run from this woman, her slave on. She could run from her situation, her past. But she couldn't run from God. Have you ever been there? Just running? Trying to get away? Hoping that what you left behind? Don't follow you? Yeah. Run? Hope it? That who's been calling you all week long doesn't catch up with you? Hey, God. is running from the presence of Sarah. But she couldn't run from the presence of the Lord. Even when God even when God's people fail to live up to the covenant, God was still faithful. Even, even, even though Abel had been unfaithful in his dealings with Hagar, God was faithful to him. This text says that the angel of the Lord found her. That word angel means messenger. The angel of the Lord speaks as God, identifies himself with God, and claims the privilege of God. It is in Exodus 3, when Moses was on Hor, the mountain of God, it says, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. But it is God who speaks to Moses from the burning bush saying, I am God of your father and the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God can speak to you. Even from a burning situation. I'll say it again. I ain't getting no claps or cheers in the room. God can speak to you. Sister Ernest, he can speak to you from a burning situation. Yeah, when it looks like things are too hot, when things are going not as you pray, when things are going rough, when the situation has gotten too tough, God can come right in the middle of the situation. Speak to him directly. Are you 
when you are running away from him. Submit to God when she's running away from God. Are y'all telling me God? It is God's duty to chase the Caleb.
Lord's message to her by faith. Then she, she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. He says, you are the God who sees. For she said, have I also seen him who sees me? When she, she realized that God, God had seen her, she responded by acknowledging that she had seen God. And she named both the Lord and the spring after her experience. Can I tell y'all something? This text mentions, and I'm going to hurry up because I'm going to move around. This text mentions spring. And spring means living water. I just thought I would tell you that. Living water. So she comes in contact with, I'm from the freestyle rest of the sermon. Uh, she comes in contact with living water. Can I tell y'all something? When you come in contact with some living water, your life will be made the richer and the better. I'm talking about some living water. Look around you right now. Somebody just looking sad. Somebody's not happy. You can't tell a bunch of masks the way they feel it. But I want to tell you, if you get around some living water, God was known as the living water in the text. Hold on. Hagar met the living Lord. She called him Elroy. She, she says, you are the God who sees. God sees. Not only does God see, but even better, she says, she says, God sees me. And I need to ask you this morning, aren't you glad that God sees you right where you are? I don't care if you're close to God, he sees you. I don't care if you're late at night, late in the midnight hour, God sees you. While you're laying down on your soft pillow, God sees you. In spite of her, she says, in spite of my confusion, in spite of, in spite of my rebellious state of mind, he, he, he lets me get a glimpse of him. Yeah. God lets her get a glimpse of him. And what is amazing, what, what an amazing thing that God will reveal himself to sinners like Hagar and like us. Us, self people. Yeah. God still lets us get a glimpse of who He is. <laughs> Y'all are smiling. She called the whale. She says, "Bear, Leroy," she, which means either the whale of the living one who sees me. It is it is it is C L K L that says the whale of uh, the seeing alive. Since Hagar saw God and remained alive, her encounter with the living God became a testimony to others. Can I tell you something? Your, because of who you are, and because you get to experience God week in and week out, your life ought to be a living testimony of who God really is. Who God really is. We can simply close the army by 
say one lesson. Give me some more juice. One lesson. We should surely learn from Genesis 16 is that when circumstances seem to be against us, when we feel like God has forgotten, forgotten us, that he isn't hearing our prayers, God wants us to submit in faith to him, not resort to our own human schemes. Can I tell you this? What? Don't be a runaway. I'm going to say this to you again. Don't be a runaway. Because your running away will eventually catch up with you. Hang on. that she would run into a living water. Some living water. Your living water is right before you. I encourage you to stay right beside this whale because we literally have a whale who never runs dry. To Jesus, just as you are. Come, young man. Come, young woman. Come while the blood is running warm in your in your veins. God bless you. This is the word of God for the people of God. My personal prayer is that you were blessed in the midst of our services on today, standing all over this room, all over this building. As somebody is making a decision that will cost them a lifetime. Amen. Let's put our hands together while someone is making a decision on this day. We encourage you to come on this side. Come on, clap all over this building. Make it clap, make some noise. Make it clap on this day. Amen. Come, come, young man. Come, young woman. Come while you still have a time. Come while you still have life and life for abundance.
tells me all the time. And all the things I want to 